Welcome back to Homeschooling Mama. Have you ever went over a subject with your kids and you thought, woo, they got this and y'all feeling good, y'all rolling along, so you think that, okay, maybe we'll put this subject down and we'll go to the next thing, to the next area in that same um, subject area because you think your kids got that down and you leave it alone for a while, you come back and you revisit it and you find out they didn't get it because they don't know what you're talking about it's like you're talking mandarin they don't remember and you think we spent all this time on this don't you remember this y'all had it down pat and they're like mm -mm. and now you find yourself having to reteach something that you have already taught and you thought your children moved on and so now your schedule's all thrown off you were excited to move on to another subject but you gotta go back and revisit something else right because they need that for whatever it is that you're going on to oh i have experienced that and boy i don't like it i tell you what it reminds me that i need to slow down and put first things first usually when that happens what i have found is that your children um they didn't really learn the material they either they had it in their short-term memory um, and they might have memorized memorized <laughs> rememberized they might have memorized some things but they didn't really learn the material um, oftentimes you need to check I know for me I have a daughter and she's really quick-witted and she's very smart and I have to stay on my game with her because you know she can pull one over on you and you never knew what hit you it's like whoa whoa what happened right you don't even know what hit you because she's just she's quick with it like that and um i really had to be careful with her especially when she was younger because a lot of times she's great at memorizing things but she wasn't really learning the material she was getting a's on everything hundreds on everything so you would think oh this girl got it but it was in her short term memory she was getting it and storing it long enough to get a test done and be like "Woo, i got it let's move to the next thing so i really had to learn how to identify that so we're going to talk about all of this, right? How to identify it, how to avoid some of it. Well, we already discussed one of the ways to identify it is if they're getting the information and right now and it seems like they got it, you come back later and they didn't get it, you can identify a lot of times that maybe um, they're memorizing it, they're holding it in their short-term memory, but they're not really getting it in their long-term memory. They haven't really learned the information. Another way is... Um, to identify is like I use this a lot with my kids I have my my bigger one teach the one up underneath them so I have five children so my oldest gets the one under her or sometimes I may even have the oldest go to a younger a much younger one the, the three oldest go to this the the younger ones things like that I mix it up a lot but if they can't teach it they don't know the information you know you hear some people say you know I don't know how to explain it to you but I could but you know I know how to do it that sometimes can be a case, but more often than not, if you don't know how to teach it to someone, to show it to someone, to explain it to someone, you don't fully know the information. You may have an idea of it, but you don't really know it most often, most times. So that's another way to be able to, um, to identify that. So when I saw that with my daughter, it, it awakened me to some things that I need to make sure my children are really learning it. And when I see that my I've gone past it and we come back and they don't get it, I see that I need to really make sure that they're they're learning information and that they're getting it. And that just because they're doing good on it right away and it seems like they got it right away and I introduced them in the first couple of days they're knocking it out the box does not mean that they have that information um, down pat. So. What do I do about that redundancy? Redundancy is so important in teaching your children. That's why I like a Becca, uh, the Becca curriculum. Right now, um, I use some of Becca worksheets as little sidebar items and, and things to help reinforce some things. But when my children were much younger, especially in the earlier grades, I really depended a lot on the a Becca workbooks. I really like a Becca workbooks now. I put together my own curriculum. I don't follow um, any curriculum to a T, but the Becca workbooks, you guys, I will always approach the, um, I will always promote a Becca workbooks because I think that they're wonderful. They have a lot of redundancy in it. And we're gonna go over redundancy, how it works and how you can utilize it in your courses, in your classes. Um, but I really like the Becca books. Now, Becca books are easy to get on Craigslist from other people and you can usually get them fairly, fairly cheap. So I really like that about a Becca because a lot of parents seem to get a little frustrated when you get the books. They'll be in brand new 
a lot of brand new books and maybe the first 20 pages are torn out of the book it's okay the rest of the book is good you can go ahead and use it but what I've heard from a lot of people is they don't like it because they don't like the redundancy oh my kid already learned that they already got it so we you know we don't like the redundancy we just wanted to keep going to new books well the Becca workbooks is a good format to learn how to use redundancy in your classrooms um, I use that format in general the redundancy doesn't mean that you just stick on a subject for forever. Redundancy pretty much means that you're kind of, even if they're learning new things, you're still reinforcing the learning of old things as well. And so even though they're moving on, they're still getting reinforcement in the background. So how would that work? So let's say we're teaching nouns, right? So we spent some time on nouns. We've, we've really thoroughly covered nouns. They're doing a good job in nouns. We're reviewing nouns. Now we're going to move on, let's say, to adjectives. Okay? So now I, while I'm doing nouns, I'll start introducing to my children the adjectives. We're not really doing any work on it. I'm just reviewing it. Not really reviewing it, but introducing it to them, getting them used to hearing the word, and then I'm going to explain it to them. Right? So there's there's an overlapping in the changing of subjects, right? So I'm still heavily working on nouns, but we're easing out of nouns and I'm introducing something else. Now, as I get more into the adjectives, I'm gonna go a little bit less on the nouns, right? But we're still revisiting it. So then now, boom, we're into adjectives, right? And so I'm telling the children every morning when we come and we do our book board work, well, it might not be in the morning when we do English, it all just depends, our grammar. Um, so when we come in in the mornings, I'll say, hey, let's go over nouns again. Can you tell me what a noun is? I might even put some stuff on the board or hand out something and say, hey, let's go over this. Can you get this? Can you show me the nouns in here? Um, can you write me some sentences or something and use some nouns or something like that, right? And then I'll say, okay, but that was just a quick review. We're on to adjectives now, okay? Now that we're on the um, adjectives and I might have some stuff on the board or we might be looking at some worksheets, I'll say, on there say perhaps I'll say um, now what is an adjective an adjective modifies a what a noun and what is a noun again right that's all of that is redundancy that's reinforcing to them what that noun is even though we're on to adjectives now when we go to another subject say we're gonna go to adverbs okay now for me personally I write um, I do a lot of board work with my children as well as workbooks and a whole lot of other things. I keep my classes very varied, right? But we do board work and when they come in, I might have a little bit of review. I may have them do some exercises on the boards. I may have some different things like that, right? So now we're moving on to adjectives. Now remember, or adverbs. Adverbs, I'm on to adverbs. While I'm doing adjectives, I start introducing adverbs. Then I'm on to adverbs. I'm still doing a little review on the board with the adjectives and then I may even ask them still about a noun right it's review it's real quick we're in and out it's not taking us but two three minutes let's get in and let's get out on the review we're not spending a lot of time on nouns we're not spending a lot of time on adjectives but I'm keeping it fresh in your mind and I'm making sure you're really getting it but we're on to adverbs right now and we know that an adverb, right? And this is what I'll tell my kids. Well, what is an adverb again? And they'll say, well, an adverb, you know, it describes the adjectives. It describes other verbs. It may even describe another adverb. Very good. Now, what is an adverb? What is the adjective again? An adjective is da 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 So do you see how that works? So even though we're on adverbs, we're still looking at the adjectives and we're still touching on the nouns. So if it modifies or if it describes, if an adverb, one moment, baby, did you need me now? So if an adverb describes an adjective, right, what is an adjective again? Oh, that's right, an adjective, what does that do? It describes a noun. Very good. So what is a noun? So they're getting that redundancy, making sure that it's still there, it's still sticking with them. We're not spending a lot of time on it. We're just reviewing it, but you're still getting it. When I give them their quizzes, their quizzes will be basically on adverbs. The majority of the quiz will be on adverbs. I may have a question or two, maybe even three, on adjectives. And then I may have one on a noun. So 
So even on their quizzes, even on their tests, there's a little review of some other things just to make sure it's being, you know, reinforcing that they're getting it and it's it's something that is a learned subject and not just something that they went over and that they didn't store, but we're primarily focusing on some on 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 adverbs or whatever it is at that time. So if I'm doing math, right? Um, like I have a couple of children right now that are basically working on fractions. But even though they're doing fractions, when we do our board work and I go over my review with them, I'm still going over, um, oh, what's the name of it? It slipped my mind. Hold on, I'm sorry. Let's call here. Uh, I'm so sorry. But the word I'm looking for is the phrase I'm looking for has slipped my mind. So I am looking at some worksheets here to see if I can get what it is called. There it is. It is orders of operations. I can't believe I did. It slipped my mind. I couldn't think of it. So even though they're doing fractions, I may have a couple of questions of order of operations on the board. I also may have some long division um, with big numbers and decimals on there um, just to make sure that that is still sticking with them, right? And we're not really talking about, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally with the order of operation, but I'm still going over it just to make sure that they got it. It takes two, three, sometimes five minutes, but that's it, depending on if I have them doing board work and then, you know, we do whatever. But it's a real quick thing. We're in and out of it, and then we move to something else. Even when I give them their tests and their quizzes on there, I may have a little bit on that of that on their form. So right now, they are doing um, changing improper fractions into mixed numbers. So even though we're changing improper fractions into mixed number, I just gave them a test on Friday. So the test was mainly changing the improper fractions into mixed numbers, but or into mixed fractions. But I also had on there some simplification. I also had on there uh, for them to tell me to find the greatest common, the greatest common factor. But I also had, I think one one question was a long division with decimals in it, and another question was. an order of operation. So I'm just making sure they still have that information on there and they're getting it correct. That's all redundancy is. It's reinforcing what has already been learned even though you might not be on that, that, that subject at this time. Redundancy is highly important in educating your children to make sure that they actually know the information and not just storing it in their their short-term memory, memorizing it for a little bit just so that they can get an A or a 100 on, on the test and then they're, they move past it and then one day you have something else and you need to teach on that basis of something that you taught them before and you're not able to move on because they did not remember the information or really truly learn the information then that you had taught them before. Whenever I see my children um, doing that, it is always alerting to me and awakening to me and shakes me back into reality because I get a little upset with myself too because then I think, oh, I was ready to do something else. But more than that, it was that I moved on too quickly. I slipped up. I didn't see something. I didn't do something right. So for me, it's always an alert to slow down get focused and make sure I'm doing things correctly. Hope something in there was helpful for you. Redundancy is a really good thing. I know some people don't like it and if you don't like it, it's okay. But for those who do like redundancy, um, a lot of people who don't, you can get their curriculum on Craigslist for next to nothing. It's really a steal. So I think it's helpful for me because I can pick up, you know, some of those books sometimes for just pennies on the dollar. But and all things remember, keep your homeschool. You do you in your homeschool. Have a great homeschool journey. Until next time. Bye.